Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to focus on an exercise which uses the whole tone scale, also known as a symmetric scale. So practicing the whole tone scale is a very useful exercise to practice your scale fingering, especially when you have to cross over fingers. And to add to it, we are also going to utilize the chords of the whole tone scale. The chords will be pretty interesting. So do stick around till the end of the lesson where it will all eventually come together. I'm going to divide the lesson into a few parts. First of all, the essential theory of this particular scale, how to form it, how to get the chords. So we'll divide our whole tone practice into two parts. First of all, we'll practice the scale ascending and descending using a simple 4x4 time signature. And against that, we will harmonize it with some interesting chords in the left hand with specific hit points which have been notated for you. And we'll also be focusing on the different whole tone scales from the same family. And then finally in the lesson we look at playing the whole tone scale over a variety of time signatures 10 by 8, 9 by 8, 8 by 8 or 4 by 4, 7 by 8, 6 by 8, 5 by 8, 4 by 4, uh, 3 by 8 or 3 by 4, 2 and even 1 by 4 which can be a bit tricky at times. So before we get started it will be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. The notation from this entire lesson including my handwritten notes is waiting for you on our Patreon page for just 5 bucks a month and that's about it. Also get your keyboards out and try and practice this with me. The exercise will work very well if you do so that way. Let's get cracking. Right, so first of all, what is the whole tone scale? A whole tone scale is basically a scale formed with two steps between each note. So if you take C, two steps, and when I say two steps, I mean two chromatic steps. So C to D is two steps because there's a D flat or a C sharp in between it, right? So C, skip the C sharp and then D. So that's your two-step motion. Then after that, you do another two steps to E, another two steps to F sharp, and two steps in music is called as a whole tone or just a tone. Okay, C, D, E, F sharp. Now another tone from F sharp, G sharp or A flat, and then A sharp or B flat, and then C. So as it turns out, it's a six note scale, one, two, three, four, five, six. And also as it turns out, each of these scales, if you say C whole tone, is pretty much the same. It has the same notes because it's all formed with whole tones or two steps. C whole tone will be the same notes as D whole tone, which will be the same notes as E whole tone, same notes as F sharp whole tone, same notes as G sharp or A flat whole tone and finally B flat whole tone. So you don't have to learn all the 12 whole tone scales. If you know C, you just have to realign your fingering, you know, and you'll get the next whole tone. E, F sharp, G sharp or A flat and B flat. And finally, C. Now, that's one family or one set of whole tone scales. Then in addition to that, you can say, let me form the whole tone scale from the family of B or from the from this family uh, set up from B. So if you take B, now I have whole tone, C sharp, another tone, D sharp or E flat. Now another tone will not be E, it will be F. And then skip G. Next, A, B. And similarly, you will have six more scales to deal with. F, G, A, and finally, B, which we started with. Okay, so for this particular lesson, since we may not have that much time, we'll stick with the 
whole tone exercise on C, but I would encourage you to do the same thing on B. Okay, so with B you will have a set of six, with C you will also have a set of six. So the first thing we are going to do is just to play the scale over a set of eight ascending and descending. So that will sound like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1. Okay. Now while doing it, we are going to do some interesting stuff in the left hand. The left hand is, now you can play two chords which work very well over the whole tone scale. If you look at the scale, it has a root, a third and a seven flat, right? So a dominant seventh chord Dominant 7th chord will work very well over the whole tone scale but for a bit more color you can do a dominant 7th or in this case C 7th and flat 5. So you get that tritone in there so the chord is called C 7 flat 5. You can even do a C 7 sharp 5 which is a more, more of an augmented chord. You could even call it as, as a C augmented 7th, aug 7. But I, I'm sticking with the... C7 flat 5 but you can also do the normal dominant 7 which sounds a bit more uh, stable you could say okay so one of these chords will happen and the first exercise is just 1 2 3 4 you're going to do crotchets in the left hand or quarter notes and the right hand we are going to go up and down the scale in semi quavers 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and let me revise the fingering so 1e and a now if your ring finger goes to the f sharp this is why this whole tone scale is the best scale i think for your fingers to get used to the crossing you're doomed if your ring finger goes to f sharp because you'll then have to cross your thumb on a black note under the ring finger which is very difficult to do okay so what we should focus on is cross your thumb before you go to the f sharp and then you'll have your index finger or the taller fingers generally we'll prefer the taller fingers these three for the black notes okay so you go two three one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, you cross at the B flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's ascending. Three, four, five, six. Cross. 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 And now when we descend, we are going to start from the E or the G or the third degree of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now when we cross, one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't want to cross your middle finger. Three, four, five, six, seven. Otherwise, the same problem. A taller finger will have to cross down under the thumb, which is going to be tricky. So, one, two, three. You pretty much go down the way you went up with your ring finger one two three four five six seven eight or one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and a and the first rhythm pattern what i'm going to do is to keep the exercise interesting on each of the whole tone scales we are going to do a different rhythm pattern so for c whole tone we'll just do crotchets you can even say tak dimi tak junu tak dimi tak sam kon kon dimi tak dimi tak dimi tak tak dimi tak dimi tak dimi kon kon also helps you with your accents you know tak it tak it tak it tak it tak it tak tak it tak it tak tak it tak it tak da you can get some different volume control over your notes or focus on different accents by saying tak it tak it tak tak it tak it Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. Versus tuck it, dimi, tuck it, juno, dimi. So the feel changes. Juno, tuck it, dimi, tuck it, juno, tuck it, juno, tuck it, juno. Okay, that's the first drill. And for those of you more advanced piano players out there, what you could do is do this across two octaves. Double your notes. That's what I have in the notation. Uh, if you're happy with this, if this is itself a good cup of tea then just stick with this otherwise you can journey towards the higher octave one two three four five six seven eight repeat 
you're kind of retracing your steps in the first octave to the second octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, and you're gonna descend from the G sharp. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. You could descend from that G sharp. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Taka de me, taka juno ta. Let's repeat that. Semi quavers. One e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three. Repeat. One e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three. Two e and a three and a four e and a one. Okay, slowly. This is the one octave version. Then two octaves. Okay, so the next whole tone scale would be D. I'm just getting myself acquainted with the D7 flat five chord, and the way we play this would be you start with the index and bring your thumb on that E. Okay, otherwise it'll be very tricky to bring your thumb there. So the whole story will be. Starting with the index finger, one, two, three, and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Nimi taka juna taka, nimi taka juna taka, nimi taka juna taka. End with your ring finger. Let's do that again. Taka nimi taka juna taka, nimi taka juna taka, nimi taka and a four e and a. If you have to do it over two octaves, one e and a two e and a one e and two e and one e and a two e and a three e and a. Repeat. One e and a two e and a one e and a four e and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, and the left hand, the rhythm pattern I have for you is very similar to the earlier one, pulse, but one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and. Every alternate beat, instead of striking on or down beat, we are striking at the E's. So one E and a one. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. One E and a two E and a one E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Repeat slowly. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e. One e and a two e and a three e. Okay, that's what we have for you on the D whole tone. Then, going on the E whole tone scale, what you could do is you could get into that E seven flat five chord, basically seven flat five for the lesson. And now to play it in the right hand. Pretty much play your tall fingers on the black notes and then cross after the B flat. Repeating. The pattern I have for you is. Similar to the earlier one, but one E and you're adding the and. And two staccatos, and then the legato. Long, short, short. Play slowly, slower. So that's your E whole tone. Let's do it across two octaves. Okay, now coming to F sharp whole tone. We've done three, basically C, D, E whole tone. Now let's do F sharp. Getting acquainted with my chord first of all and the scale. One more time. So start with your thumb here and then cross. And then you'll have to sort of double cross again. Two 
octaves okay and what's the pattern we have now that's basically a thresio one e a two e and a three e let's do that E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Okay, let's do it across two octaves. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E. And a three e. A flat whole tone. So starting on A flat. You could probably start with your thumb and cross immediately at the C, and cross here, cross there. So you could kind of be very this first three finger heavy, or you can even start with your index finger. So you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. I I tend to start with my thumb and end with the thumb as well. So it kind of has a different fingering than the other scales. Black notes generally start. I tend to start with the thumb, but you could also start with your index. I tend to end with the thumb, so might as well also start with the thumb. So now let's form our chord, which is A seven flat five, rather A flat seven flat flat five, A flat dominant seventh. So that'll be A flat dominant seventh, and now you flat five. So let's do that. Okay, and the pattern I have for you is one E and a two E and a three and a four E and a one E and a two E, one E. E of the one and the E of the two. One E and a two. So, okay, whole story over two octaves. Okay, and the last whole tone scale we have in this family with C would be B flat. So you could do B flat seven flat five, and the whole tone scale I would start with my index. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, because I want to do it over a set of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and the pattern I have for you is very simple, just minims. So five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's all your whole tone scales practiced over sets of eight. I've given you different rhythm patterns to tackle different hand independence challenges. Now, I don't want to leave the lesson with just four by four. Why don't we explore a few more time signatures? To do that, what I thought we'll do is play or continue to play semi quavers, but let it go from ten by eight. Ten by eight, nine by eight, eight by eight. Basically, what you heard me play in the intro video. So start with tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten in semi quavers. So this will be more like a challenge for you to be able to not only play the whole tone scale but also shift across different time signatures because you're going to go from ten to nine to eight and so on. So let's start with ten, the bigger number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got it. Now, if you do ten all the way up, then ten all the way down will recycle the drill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, nine, 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 nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, and you're playing semi quavers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you'll be playing twenty notes in order to finish it off, right? Uh, then you can do nine by eight. One two three four five six seven eight nine. One two three four five six seven eight nine. You're gonna reduce one note from G sharp. It comes down to F sharp. Three four five six seven eight nine. One two three four five six seven eight nine. One two three four five six seven eight nine. One two three four. Again nine into two eighteen notes, and then 
what's one number lesser than nine? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've already discussed that with the drill throughout the lesson, right? Then seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 seven. One, two, three, four. Then six. One, two, three, four, five, 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 six. One, five. One, two, three, four, 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 five. One. Then four. One, two, three, 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 four. One, two, three. Then three. One, two, 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 three. One. Two. One, two, 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 one. And then one, 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 one. So basically, you have ten all the way down. But this exercise can get even more interesting and even more challenging if you do it across two octaves. So you're pretty much going to start from around middle C. And go till the very end of the piano on an 88 key. I think you might even hit that note. So uh, if you do 10, I've just limited it to 10. If you're the kind who likes to start with 13, then feel free. Then it can be 13, 12, 11, 10. I'm just starting with 10 because I feel I'm human. So if you do 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, one. And then it continues, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One. And you're going to cross over from that E. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Taka dimi, taka gina to ta. So taka dimi, taka gina to taka dimi, taka gina to. Can help you count nine. Tak, taki ta taka, taki ta taka. Can help you count fives. Coming to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This we discussed. In the earlier chapter, and then seven, you can do it as taka dimi taka ita taka dimi taka ita taka dimi five six seven one two three four five six one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven one then six three four five six one two three four five six taka dimi taka taka dimi taka ta five one two taka ita taka taka ita taka taka ita taka taka ita ta taka taka ita for five taka dimi taka juno taka dimi taka juno ta that's four taka ita taka ita taka ita taka ita six. Or other sets of three. Then one two one two one one two 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 one. And then one 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 one. Okay. Even the one by four could be quite interesting. So don't forget that. So in the drill, or I would probably call this a challenge. You have to go one three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, four, five, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six. One, two, three, four, five, 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 six. One, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, one. 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 So you can kind of take the exercise to the next level with these sort of movements with different time signatures. And please note that I didn't change my whole tone scale. The, the you'll challenge yourself in a different way once you do the whole story on D whole tone and E whole tone. And imagine what will happen once you change the whole tone family itself and go to the family of B, where you get B, C sharp, E flat, F, G, A, and so on. So. Whenever I practice the piano, I just tend to keep a couple of things in mind. One is I feel if the end goal is to practice your fingering, which is crossing over the thumb under some fingers or the fingers over the thumb, crossing over uh, based fingering. I think you would then want to find out a scale which is rather tricky because then if you do the whole tone scale, then the major and minor is going to be 
a walk in the park it's going to be very easy because the the steps are not two steps always it's going to be single steps you know or some double steps a lot of them would be single steps so the whole tone scale will prepare you for the real world which is simpler than the whole tone scale so that's one general approach i follow when practicing the piano i like to practice things which are a lot tougher than the normal stuff and then the normal stuff which you play with musicians around you at a jam or at a concert that will end up or should end up being a lot easier uh, by that argument i guess a lot of the top singers out there let's say a mariah carey will sing a note which you think is insanely high you you will wonder how on earth did she hit that note but maybe in her practice sessions she's actually able to hit an even higher note you know so maybe the show is a lot easier in in that sense so it's the same with other instruments i guess we tend to want to practice faster and then the show will become a very chill experience and the other thing i like to do when i generally practice the piano would be to not just focus on playing a scale up and down it would be to play it with purpose so for that if you observe in the lesson we've looked at multiple accents multiple number of notes multiple starting points and then the left hand also challenged itself with different chords and then accent points different patterns rhythmically and so on so the advantage there being you can put in a lot more effort over a period of 30 minutes than just say i want to just do scales up and down you know so practice tough and practice efficiently practice a volume of things in one go like a kind of a a full body workout so to speak okay right guys hope you found the lesson useful you can get the notation and my handwritten notes on our patreon page don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon for regular notifications i will catch you in the next one cheers